you like to include your custom use cases on the VSEC, with no dread in the container, you will have access to many interfaces of the VSEC, like CAN, Ethernet or Modbus. Hi, I'm Michael, Field Application Engineer of the VSEC support team. Today, I will give you an overview about Node-RED and show you some example flows that we have already implemented for you. So after this video, you can directly start implementing your own use cases. Let me first show you how you install your container. So here we have the web UI of the VSEC. In the settings gear is a section for the container management. You can upload the image, restart your container, clear the persistent data or delete the image. If you like to upload the image, you just need to select the image and click upload image. This might take a few minutes. As soon as the container is installed, it will be listed in installed container. You will get some information like the container image, the storage and the current container status. The container will start automatically as soon as it is installed. Then you can open Node-RED by adding the port 1880 to the URL. Node-RED is a graphical based programming tool where you can create your own program directly in the browser. On the left side is the palette. Here are all nodes listed. Nodes are always having an in and or outgoing message. In the middle is the main workspace. Here we see multiple flows already, but for the beginning we will add our own flow. Therefore we just drag and drop an inject and a debug node and wire them together. Now to deploy our changes in the running system in the header we need to click on the deploy button. Our changes have been successfully deployed. On the sidebar on the right, we see some more tabs. For example, the information tab that gives us information about each flow. We can hide them and we can disable them. We also have an help tab where by clicking on the nodes, see exactly what they are doing. Then there is a debug tab, which is very helpful for debugging. In this case, we have an inject node and a debug node. The inject node sends the timestamp to the debug node. The debug node then prints out the information here on the right side. Every time I click on the inject node, the debug node prints out the current message. We also have a setting tab for all flows, an information tab and a context tab. Here the context is in different scopes, global, flow and node. But let's stay on the debug tab. So in this case, to make it easier to understand what time it actually is, we add here a function. By clicking on the function, we can edit the function node. Function nodes are programmed in JavaScript. So let's make the date easier to read. Now we have created our first function. Again, we see these blue circles here. That means our changes are not deployed yet. After clicking deploy, the changes are in the running system. So every time now I click on the timestamp, the timestamp is shown much more easier to read. So that's how you simply create flows in Node-RED. Next, we want to have a look at the flows that are already implemented for you. The program behind of this is the simulation of a power electronics. That means if you click in the web UI, the simulation for power electronics, it's the exact same functionality you can now do in Node-RED. Therefore, 
we have a connection from PEP WebSocket to Node-RED itself. And we simulate the power module and the isolation monitor. Let's have a look at the isolation monitor. In here, we again see multiple inject nodes. That's to set the different values that are possible. After that, we store the information in the global storage so that we can use the information in each and every flow. After that, we created an updated message. That's just an empty payload but has now a topic values updated. This gets forwarded to the link out node. With the link out node, you can use also in other flows. So if there's any change of the isolation status, this information will be forwarded to any other flow that is connected to the link out node. And they know that there were made changes and they can get the current status of the global storage. We can also have a look now on the right side on the context. In the global storage, we see already multiple values. And here, for example, the mentioned isolation status. To simulate the power module, we read the target values that we receive from the VSEC application. And we set it to our measured voltage and current that are requested, because it's just a simulation. After that, we again create a values updated message, like we've seen before in the isolation monitor. Now we will have a look at the contactors. Here we compute the contactor status. Therefore, we need multiple information. For example, the CP state, the temperatures, and the actual target values. Here we are listening to an MQTT topic. That's an MQTT in node subscribing to a single topic of the MQTT broker. Right now, we see only the status connected. That's because we haven't set our credentials yet correctly. But that's quite easy to do. Just set in security your password and username. Click on done and deploy the changes. Now we are connected and we see our current CP state. Current temperature is not showing correctly because I haven't connected an actual temperature sensor. As soon as we get the CP state, we first of all store it in our flow space. That's because we want to get all current information if we compute our contact status. Here we have a JavaScript that first gets all information that we need, so the CP state, the temperatures, and the target contactor status. That's getting from the global space. Then after checking if the CP state is correct, so C or D, and the temperature is in range, and the target contactor status is correct, we set our payload to true or false. With this information, getting forwarded, first of all, to the debugger and to the output 14. This one is connected to the safety relay. Also, we store our contactor status in the global space and create a values updated message for the other flows. Then we will have a look at the PEP WebSocket. Here, on top, we receive all incoming messages from PEP WebSocket. Then we have a JSON partner behind it and a link out node. That's in this case going just in the flow directly to the link in node. Here we have our outgoing message to the WebSocket. 
we've made this here in top with all these linked nodes to get a better overview. You also have the possibility in the workspace to zoom out or in or actually navigate in a flow. Every incoming message is getting into a switch node. In this case, we check the type of the message. If it's a request message, it's get forwarded to the first output. Every other type will not be for interest in this case. After that, we check the kind of the message. So if it's a configuration, cable check, target values, contact status or request message. Then we create the response message and send it back to the VSEC application. Then we will have a look at the VSEC IOs. You can also look at these in Node-RED by subscribing to the MQTT topic. With the hashtag you can subscribe to every IO topic. Again, in a switch node, we can check this time for the topic of the message. So if it's the first input, it will get forwarded to the first output. And in here, we then see the current status of the IOs. We also have the possibility to set in and outputs easily by using in check nodes. Last but not least, we will have a look at the dashboard. Therefore, you can easily open the dashboard by opening node red slash UI. That's how the pre-configured dashboard does look like. You can see normal measured values, we use the slider or some buttons. In Node Red, there are some pre configured nodes for this. In the category Dashboard. In here, we use this inject node to inject every two seconds a message by starting a flow. So, every two seconds, for example, the isolation status will get from the global space and print it out on the dashboard. In this case, in the info section. Here are the sliders that we have seen and the stop buttons. So this way you can easily create your own dashboard. So now we have seen the flows that are already part of the VSEC container. We have created even more example flows for you where we have connected different devices to the Node-RED container. For example, reading Modbus data from a Bender isometer or connecting a LEM energy meter via HTTP requests or a Phoenix power module communicating via CAN. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you are having any technical question about the VSEC application or Node-RED, check the latest manual or feel free to send a mail to support at vector.com. All the best and lots of fun by implementing your first program.